coffee break uh, session and it we will have nine to conan leung so he made my uh, life more difficult because i thought that it's just conan uh, and the title is smoothing scattering and the conjecture of fukaya so he's from the chinese university of hong kong all right so uh thank you very much for the invitations and uh apologize for not being able to be physically attend the conference in person. Uh, anyway, so uh, today I will be presenting my joint work with uh, Kong Wei Chen and Ziming Ma, and it's uh, supported by several research grants from the Hong Kong government. So to begin, let me uh, recall uh, very, very briefly uh, the setting that we will be interested in. So we're just looking at the Kayla manifold, okay? And when the k manifold is the Calamiel manifold, meaning first train class is zero. So it has particularly nice property that first of all, it has a holomorphic volume form, which we denote as capital omega. And using the holomorphic volume form, it can be used to prove that the modular space of complex structure is smooth. Okay, so let me uh, briefly explain this property because uh, we will be generalizing this behavior to, to large complex structure limits. So this is the theorem of uh, Bogmolov and Todorov. So M is the modular space of all complex structures on X up to the demorphism. Okay. Uh, the theorem says that this is smooth, okay. which is the same as saying that any small, any infinitesimal deformation can be integrated out to an honest deformation, meaning that uh, the deformation problem is unobstructed. Okay. So how do you change complex structure? How do you deform complex structure? Okay. There are uh, two standard approach. The first is a trap approach. Trap approach is uh, saying that a complex manifold is uh, described as the union of holomorphic chart, the transistor function are holomorphic with the morphism. And now we can just uh, vary those are Green functions. So for example, if you identify uh, or open chart with a part in CN and then another one, and then the, the one in the middle is called the uh, Green functions. And this is very demolomorphically. And then that will give you a, an, another complex manifold. That's, that's one way to change the complex structure. By more uh, defensive geometric approach using defensive form uh, is the following. So a complex structure is also can be described in terms of a D bar operator satisfying D bar square being zero. So if you change to a different one, okay. then the difference will be a element with a zero one form with value in the tangent bundle. And this is in fact part of a uh, differential graded Lie algebra. So if you just look at differential forms, and this is a differential graded algebra. And the Lie bracket on the tangent bundle for better fields give, you, give this a differential graded Lie algebra structure. And that is the things, the structure that is going to describe you uh, the, the space of uh, complex structure. Why? Because uh, the equations that is this new uh, operator still define complex structure is the same as saying that the square is zero, like the bar square being zero. And then you just expand this, and that, that is this equation, which we'll be discussing uh, repeatedly today. And it's called the Morikatan equation. We we'll just describe it as MC equation. Okay. So the reason is uh, the bar square itself is zero. So therefore, uh, the equation look like this. So it involves the deep operator and then the Lie bracket of the vector fields. Uh, so if you try to understand it using this uh, defensive form approach to study uh, an obstructiveness problem, so we do a Taylor expansion. Okay, so you write the form in terms of T is the Taylor expansion in T, okay, because you start with D bar itself, so the first term is already linear in T. So the equations, you can expand it order by order in T. The linear term is just saying that phi one 
is holomorphic. So this is a first order deformations and which uh, this more Cartan equation in this order, just saying that uh, this is a uh, cohomology class in H1 with value in the tangent bundle. Okay. And then the uh, T square term, the next term is this one. Okay. So it says that uh, phi one square has to be D bar except. Okay. And similarly, you can do a high and higher order term. Okay. So if you want to prove unobstructedness, meaning that once you are given phi one, so your first order deformations, and then you want to solve all these equations inductively. So once you have phi one, you want to say that the bracket of phi one is d bar except, and so on. And the point is that if we are in the Calabial case, it turns out that we can always solve this. It's always solvable to all order. So why Calabial make a difference? So how, when, when you are in Calabial case, then you have a holomorphic volume form. This is the N0 form. So you can use the N0 form to contract part of the uh, tangent directions, and then you remain with uh, cotangent directions. So now you become, go to a usual topo differential form level. So you can use that this particular uh, holomorphic volume form to change the deformation problem to relate it to something of, about the uh, HPQ, uh, 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 PQ forms. Now, on the PQ forms, besides having a D bar operator, you have an extra operator, it's called a D, it's a round operator. And the corresponding operator on this side, under this isomorphism, is called a uh, BB operator. Okay. So you can think about the BB operator, it's just, if you want to understand, uh, after the identification, it's just a D operator. And then we want to use the Hodge theory to help, to solve the unobstructedness. The main lemma is this uh, formula, you can just check it directly. It's called the 10th order total of lemma. It says the following, that the bracket, remember why the bracket? Well, we want to solve the equation involving the bracket. So the bracket can be in terms of the BV operator, meaning D. So, so we are looking at all this structure here, and these are called uh, polyvector field. Okay. So this uh, has all this structure. This uh, has a structure of D bar, BV operator is like D. And originally, because it's also tangent bundle, so it's an algebra and also a D algebra. Okay. So originally, we have, uh, if you, oops. If you are only up to here, then there's a DGLA structure together with this uh, BV operator, we will call DGBV algebra. And that will be uh, this, we will be coming back to it again and again. All right. So why you can always solve it? The equation is once you are Calabria with the 10 dollar of lemma, you can always solve this uh, more time equation to all order. Okay. So where's the key point? The key point is the following. We start with the first order, and then you want to solve that phi one bracket, phi one is exact. You want that to be D bar of something. Okay, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you use the fact that once you go to uh, the vocal homology, the D bar the vocal homology is the same as the D the vocal homology is because uh, the D bar Laplace is the same as the D Laplace. Okay, so the advantage of doing so is uh, if there's a cohomology class, so it's D bar close, you can assume it's D close. Okay, so this one. Then you go back and look at the 10th order of lemma, and you see that if you start with something which is already D close, then the bracket is D bar except, or D except, or BV except. Okay? So therefore, the bracket is this, okay, it's a D except. Okay? But again, using Hodge theory, that means that the cohomology class is trivial. So it's being D except is D bar except. Then we can solve that equation to this order. And similarly, you can solve the equation to every order in the same way, in the same manner. So you can inductively solve the equation 
to all order, uh, formally to solve the uh, moral Catan equation. So this is a very classical, a uh, very uh, old story about unobstructedness, meaning that the deformation is always uh, smooth. Okay, or you can always find uh, deformations when you're given first order. And more generally, you can uh, not just uh, looking at omega. So earlier we had this one is uh, in uh, zero one form, and then we can look at a more general element here. Okay, and then the general formula should be like this. It's like if you think about it in terms of the usual case, it would be like d bar plus the d, but separately. So let's just put a parameter. This should call it C. So that just gives you both uh, d bar equation and the d equation. So therefore, in a in a BV uh, theory, and uh, the one that you solve is this equation. And the solution of this is in fact a very useful, for example, to produce a semi infinite variation of hot structure on the more dry space of complex structure, which play important role in uh, symmetry and following the work of uh, Nicole. Okay. And this approach, you see that uh, the defense of my approach here gives a very direct uh, proof of the unobstructedness, okay, which uh, is not as transparent if you're working on a track approach. All right, so we are trying to understand uh, this, using this idea to understand uh, mirror symmetry. And let me be very brief that uh, it says the following. The mirror symmetry conjecture says that two different Calabria manifolds were even topologically different of the same dimension n, okay, such that the symplectic structure for one, so this is a symplectic structure, this is a symplectic form, okay, and this is a complex. So the holomorphic volume form, in fact, determine the complex structure on x. Okay. So the symplectic structure, symplectic geometry of x trap is equivalent to the complex geometry of x. This is a very rough statement. Okay. And then it can be formulated more precisely, like in conservative homological mirror symmetry conjecture about the category uh, on the synthetic side and the category, the, 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 the bar, uh, uh, and the bounded derived category of the relationship on X uh, being equivalent. And uh, the on the object level, the synthetic side, the object are uh, Lagrangians are manifold, maybe with flat line window, and the complex side is just complex submanifold. So this look very different object, if you look at it correctly, then these two categories are isomorphic, which is a very surprising conjecture at the time. And then, uh, which I think was very mysterious, and the uh, geometry, Yao and Sasso, for the SYC conjecture, give a geometric uh, 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 proposal of why this uh, duality should take place, should be taken place. It says that when these two X and X track are mirror, uh, what happened is that, uh, both of them should have a torus vibrations. Okay. And then on the uh, Lagrange, uh, synthetic side, they are Lagrangian torus vibration. And then in fact, the fiber torus are due to each other. Okay. And then the base are uh, the same. Well, more precisely, they are Lagrangian due to each other. Okay. And the duality between complex and synthetic geometry is basically saying that the base direction is kept uh, the same, and then the fiber direction, it changed from the torus to the due torus. But this is uh, only supposed to be more, uh, uh, to hold true near the structure, which look very classical. So those are in the synthetic side, is the volume form being, is the volume form being uh, very large. In the complex side, these are called the large complex structure limit. So these are called large volume limit in the synthetic side, and the large complex structure limit in the complex side. Okay, so now that we use uh, this uh, A side or A model referring to the synthetic side, and then the B model is called the B side referring to the complex side. So we try to understand why the, these two spaces are mirror and how to construct one to another. Okay. How do you construct the complex manifold from the synthetic manifold? The idea is the following. If you are really in the large volume limit and the large complex structure limit, those are some very large limits and a lot of singularity are flow away already. Okay. So at those places, they are just uh, described in like uh, this SYC picture that they are due towards vibrations. 
And how about if you're away from the last structure limit? Well, if you're starting from uh, the sympathetic manifold side, okay, the large volume just uh, you just scale the sympathetic fork like k omega to k big going to infinity. Okay, so the volume will go to infinity. And that, so in particular, is large volume. And that is more classical in the sense that in this limit, the so-called quantum correction will go to zero because uh, in this A side, quantum correction is all coming from holomorphic disk, mapping to X may be bounded in the Lagrangian and so on. But each of such holomorphic disk will be weighted by this uh, vector. The vector will be the synthetic area uh, to the exponential minus of the synthetic area. So therefore, if K is very large, the synthetic area go to infinity, E to the minus infinity will go to zero. Okay. Meaning that uh, in this, uh, in this limit, all the quantum correction will go to zero. So this is a more classical theory. Now, the, the, so this is also a, a, a relatively easy. The main difficult part, the main thing to understand is so-called this reconstruction, is how do you go back to here? How do you go back to the X, okay? So of course, uh, then you have to remember some of the information that you throw away, so all this thing, information that you throw away, and then how do you recapture those information and produce through this uh, X, okay? Now you see that this problem, you can think about this is that you start from a complex structure, which is extremely singular. Okay, just like you throw away all the interesting part in a way. And, uh, and then you want to recall some of this quantum data and then we and then reconstruct this. You, so the way that we think about it is that you are really deforming the complex structure from an extremely singular guy, the most singular one, and then deform the complex structure back to a finite uh, complex structure. So that's why we explain all this as uh, moving behavior, which is because this is also a deformation, but this is really a problem about deformation from something extremely singular. So deformation from infinity. Okay, so that is the problem that I'm going to explain today. All right, so let's uh, 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 describe this one. Okay, so we, remember we're doing this. Oops, sorry, we're doing this. Right. So we start from a sympathetic manifold, X, track, okay, with a Lagrangian vibration. So having a Lagrangian vibration, uh, proper Lagrangian vibrations, the fiber is automatically some torus. In fact, uh, the base has a integral affine structure because the torus has total lattice structure telling you that the base is a uh, affine manifold. Well, I, I, away from some singularity. The, the problem is that when I say the Grandian vibration, uh, most, only, most of the fiber are smooth. Some of the fiber could be singular. So all this structure that I just mentioned about this uh, alpha structure on the base and all this is only survived outside the singular fiber, the, uh, the locus uh, where upstairs is a singular fiber. Okay. So S will refer to the, S refer to the singular, the locus where the fiber is singular. And then that will also tell you that the B track, the alpha manifold have singularity S. But outside, outside here, outside this uh, S, the synthetic manifold is just the uh, standard construction, meaning that it's really the cotangent bundle of uh, B track quotient by the integral alpha structure, the lattice structure in B, okay? in the tangent bundle of B. Okay? So therefore, uh, you, you give you a very precise description of X trap. Well, of course, it, because you throw away all the singularity. Okay? So this is over the part away from the singular part, singular locus. And then, uh, and then the next step is uh, you take the dual vibration. Okay? So this is the first step. Now the second step here is you take the dual, oops, and then you take the dual vibration here. Okay? And all this, uh, that is also quite easy. Uh, and so the deal instead, instead of tangent goes for the lattice, a cotangent, so you look at the tangent. Okay? So the cotangent, the deal get a tangent. And you immediately get a deal torus vibration. And you have a uh, semi flat complex structure immediately. Okay? So this, all these are very direct and uh, simple. But the, the, so therefore the difficult part is lying in this last step is how do we remember all those uh, things that you throw away 
and then use those to do this uh, deformation from this uh, very simple, like a CSR N, this type of thing, comp complex structure to a finite part of the complex structure to be rather complicated. Okay, so this is the whole project. Right. So uh, first, uh, pro uh, many years ago, Fukaya has the proposal of explaining how does the singular fiber is uh, contributing to the correction of this complex structure that we are described, try to describe. Okay. So what does the singular fiber give you? If you have a singular fiber, okay, so in this example, bigger, so you, get, you get one singular fiber, all the other fiber are not singular. So in this case, uh, there's only one singular point S here. The thing is that uh, if you are in this particular picture, in this two dimensional picture, along one of the directions. So uh, if you go from a singular point, what happened to the singular point? Is a singular point is really a bunch of circles. So all these are circle, 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 and the circles shrink to zero. Okay. And that create a singularity in this case. So this, the singular fiber, the singularity really come from the nearby fiber having a vanishing circle and keep on vanishing to become a point. And you can get this from any directions. But uh, most of the other directions, this, this will not be holomorphic, only in uh, one of those directions, and uh, this uh, vanishing, this family of vanishing circle will be holomorphic. So you will get a holomorphic function, holomorphic map from a disk, because this is a uh, one parameter circle, family of circle changing to a point, so this gives you a holomorphic disk, whether the boundary is lying inside over the, uh, the, the fiber over one of the points, okay? Okay, so this uh, singular, sing, singular fiber will capture this uh, holomorphic disk information, which are the quantum corrections. And uh, those information, you can think about, okay, you can recall by this. I mean, things around this, you might have a holomorphic disk. And then, uh, this is what happened in two dimensions. In general, in high dimensions, these are uh, places that you can support the holomorphic disk uh, shrinking to a uh, singular fiber is uh, a co-dimension one. So those are called the wall in B trap. Okay, they may not be so linear in that, okay? So they're, they're in this in B trap. So there's a wall. So the, the union of all those possible B, which uh, is a boundary, uh, which, which can support boundary of the holomorphic disk. Which are uh, shrink to a point. Okay. And that's like those are uh, co dimension ones of space inside B chap. And then uh, if you go to the Lagrangian field B, then that will be linear subspace. Okay, so this is the first step. Near from the singular fiber, you will start to see some holomorphic disks coming up, uh, which are the quantum correction. But are these all holomorphic disks with boundary in the Lagrangian fiber? Well, that's uh, the next important ingredient is that if you have two holomorphic disks come together, sometimes they can glue together and then form a, another holomorphic disk, okay? So let me just show a uh, picture here. Okay. Um, so for example, you have a so-called pair of pants. So this is a holomorphic curve. Okay. So if you have holomorphic disk here, holomorphic disk here, okay. and then uh, you can, oh, sorry. This space itself, if you draw it like this, is still another holomorphic disk. So you can glue holomorphic disk in some way and then to form another holomorphic disk. So this is a gluing holomorphic disk. So for example, uh, in this case, this uh, you start from a single point here and then you, along this wall direction, you start to have a holomorphic disk. If you go for another direction, you also have a holomorphic disk. And when they come together, and then you can continue, using this pair of pen uh, picture to construct a holomorphic disk if the direction are correct. So this holomorphic disk will correspond to gradient flow G, uh, this is a G that called B, uh, T uh, in B track. The downstairs, this is the way that I draw a picture. In fact, the picture I draw here should be really uh, on the Legendre like, due side, so this becomes strict lines. Meaning the following, remember earlier, what we do is, uh, oops, If you start from singular point, singular structure, alpha structure, then you get uh, 
for this wall structure, there's a recording where the quantum correction comes in. When the wall collide, they may have more wall coming out. And that, those are still information that can tell you uh, holomorphic disinformation. And each of these three here, each of this wall here, in fact, we associate to uh, one of these vector, and then also we're generating series of the corresponding holomorphic disk. Even those information are really recording that are uh, uh, because the fiber is a high dimensional torus. So whether all this uh, circle come together, can glue together to form a uh, pair of pen, uh, has some constraint. Uh, so they have to record those data. So this, so the wall will come before this data. Okay. And then we want to use those data to, oops, to, to do this uh, reconstruction of the X, okay? So this is this last step. Okay? So we want to say that, uh, now we want to use this data, this together with this, uh, uh, scatter, uh, this uh, wall information to reconstruct that. This is the plan. Okay. So that uh, was proposed by uh, Fukaya and has been studied uh, extensively uh, by first uh, by conservation and Solomon, and uh, they did that in the dimension two case, and then uh, introduced a scattering diagram and uh, consistent scattering diagram, and then later this uh, became a big program by Ross and Siebert, and they worked out the whole construction for all dimensions. The thing is, uh, this wall information, which are encoding holomorphic disk count in the sympathetic side, should be. Uh, getting this a consistent scattering diagram. Okay. Uh, the point is that uh, if you want to, the way to go to this consistent scattering diagram, so this is a particular case of a uh, uh, consistent scattering diagram that uh, is not arbitrary, which, which particular wall that you have to add uh, is that to make sure that the way that you glue all this manifold later will be a smooth complex manifold. So that's a combinatorial way to control that what are the possible scattering diagram. That you can allow to make it consistent. And then you want how one can use a consistent scattering diagram to really smooth out this uh, very singular complex manifold to the one that which is mirror to the, the beginning synthetic manifold. Okay. So uh, quickly recall is that uh, we start with a wall uh, which comes from singular singular singularity, they give you some initial wall. Okay. And then the grouping this information will give you new wall. And those new wall are called scattered wall, they come up scattering. Okay. And the conservative solvent and cross receiver program is that uh, you can, in fact, describe all these uh, scattered walls, would be extremely complicated, but they are also controlled combinatorically by monodromic information. Okay. So let me uh, describe this a little bit. So if you start with, uh, so if you have two walls coming to collide together, so one wall, you have F1, and then another wall with F2, okay? So if you try to do that, so the scattering diagram is saying that you have really have to, when you collide, you have to add new wall. Why do you need to add new wall? Okay, because all this, this wall will be giving you automorphism to do this screwing of different charts, okay? To try to glue to construct new manifold. X. Okay. So if you do this one on the uh, on the WI, this particular wall, okay, and this will be the good. But then the thing is that if you go around this uh, this uh, intersection point, they are not consistent, meaning that there is a monodromy, non-trivial monodromy, and then you won't be able to glue uh, to get a holomorphic manifold, complex manifold, okay, because that is supposed to come back to itself, and they are not. So what the way the solution is that you can, in fact, that is the unique way to add new wall. You may not be just one wall, it could be many, many wall. But the point is that there is, to make sure you get this consistency, then you will have a unique way to add some wall to make this true. So in this particular case, you only need to add one particular wall here. Then once you include that one here, so that when you go here and then hit the red wall and then come back and so on, then the composition will become identity. So you add this new grouping, 
that will give you a uh, compatible grid information. And uh, we'll, then this should be related to the fact that why you need this particular new wall is because uh, when you have two different um, holomorphic curve coming to this intersection point, you may glue them. And then the way that you can glue is supposed to be just exactly because one of these new wall. All right. So this, uh, this program was uh, uh, completed by Ross Siebert to construct this complex manifold. And the construction is in a way, is a track approach in the sense that you do this on one chart and then another chart, and then you the, the glue them holomorphically and then vary those. Okay? It's extremely complicated because they start from something the most singular, so the last complex structure limit. And so that can be used to smooth the last complex structure limit to X. The last complex structure in, in the language, more precisely, is a toric degeneration, which, for example, is the following color here. So look at the K3 surface. So this is a uh, degree four homogeneous polynomial in four variable. So uh, this is a Calabria surface in CP3. And we write down a family here. T is a family. Now, generic T, this is smooth. But when T goes to zero, this, this term, the first term will be gone. Okay? And then you're left with a uh, union of hyper plane. Okay? So the picture will be several, four copy of CP2. Okay? So the structure is that uh, you use a scattering diagram to smooth out the four copy of CP2 to a mirror family. Now, uh, now let's uh, start with uh, our approach here. And our approach is try to understand this whole thing more geometrically, meaning uh, more directly in terms of differential form approach. And the idea is that instead of doing local chart, we will try to understand that complex structure okay, is really solving a more Cartan equation. And which is really uh, part of uh, when you're given a DGLA structure. Okay. And that will give you a direct approach to, to see, for example, the uh, the smooth, uh, the unobstructedness, and also the semi infinite uh, uh, variation host structure on the module space, including the large complex structure. Okay, so this is a, a, a summary of what we were doing. So, this, the Mori Cartan equation, the solution of that is exactly giving you this consistent scattering diagram. So, the scattering diagram is really an coding solution of this PDE. Okay. And uh, then if the smooth, the, the, and then also if you try to deform from the last complex structure limit to a, this should be T here, to be a, a, a honest complex manifold, okay? From so default, deforming from singularity to the smooth manifold, it's really study of deformation uh, via the uh, DGLA approach. So first of all, first uh, we we'll want to see that uh, what are the wall related to any of this differential form approach. The thing is that a wall is really a delta function type uh, deformations. So what is a deformation? Okay, well deformation is supposed to be first order deformation is supposed to be described by some zero one form with value in the tangent bundle. Okay, so this is only the semi flat part, meaning that this is really the uh, cotangent bundle of uh, B. Uh, uh, divided by uh, this lattice. Okay? So this is really the, the very simple one, maybe C star N and something like that. Okay, but then uh, you will start from some very singular guy to really start the deformation. Okay? So each wall will corresponding to, so all this information, this vector and also this uh, function F, okay, will be really the information to give you the, uh, the singular first order deformation. And then we try to see where they can perform. So the talk will describe the uh, divided into three parts. The first part is uh, the solving the more Cartan equation is the exactly the thing giving you this uh, consistent scattering, scattering diagram. Okay. So so this is a scattering. You start from a singular point, and then have the wall, and then another singular point have the wall, and then, then they heat together. Okay. So the thing is, uh, if you each of the wall if you just do this on one wall, then it's already this delta function already satisfied the more Cartan equation. So this is really uh, a 
dramatic change of complex structure because the delta function deformation, but they satisfy the satisfy the uh, work done equations. But when you hit and see that, then you may be wanting to add the sum of phi one and phi two. The sum does not satisfy it. Okay. So again, remember what is the phi i? The phi i is the delta functions type uh, deformations. Uh, to make the analysis uh, work out, so we will be looking at some uh, slice moving of that. So this is a smoothing of the delta function. In fact, we only need to consider all the differential form, which are close to be like a smoothing of a delta function type differential form uh, supporting uh, uh, on the on some type polyhedron. So this is the first theorem that I will uh, describe. Is like, as I mentioned, this is joint work with Kowei Chen and Zimi Ma. So the same as the following. If you start with these two walls coming in, but notice that uh, when, when, the, when generically, when they hit, they're really hitting in a smooth path. And then all this whatever happening is a local behavior. Okay, so this is really a local picture here for the scattering. So when they come to hit to each other, they no longer have solutions, and then we try to solve that. Okay, and then we solve the equation. It turns out that the solutions, the solution to the more Cartan equations is of the following form. So phi one plus phi two is not the solution. Is you will be adding some other term. Okay, so the the, the term that you are adding is in fact of delta function shape. Okay, so the so the key point is that the solution of this more Cartan equation just solve the equation. We'll be telling you that they are really delta function uh, along uh, some other new walls of this type. Okay. So the, the, the proof of the theorem is that you start with this initial property and then you try to solve the equations by, uh, by standard type method, like pre-initiated type form summations using a uh, tree formula of a tree formula. Okay. Then you get a new solution. But the thing is that you want to argue that the new solution is really a, uh, it's a delta function type of form. Okay. And then all those forms are really supporting on all these new walls. Okay. So you have to do an asymptotic analysis on this PDE solution. Okay. So that's how we prove this film. Ah. Then if you really try to understand uh, the smoothing, then uh, you need to also include this information near the singularity, all this. We are at this moment, we are only understanding what are the, uh, the behavior of how the new world coming up. Okay. So let's just uh, recall how we, in the earlier, in the, in the smooth case, as you mentioned in the beginning of the talk, how do we get deformation? Okay. So in a smooth case, when you get deformation, the first step is you start with a complex manifold. And then you look at x cross c, okay? But then you only have the complex structure at t equal to zero to begin with. Okay. And then we, so this is the first step. Okay, of course, it's obvious, you just took a product. Okay. And uh, the second step is then you try to solve this uh, more Cartan equations because uh, you start, you already have the solution at t equal to zero. And then the first order may give you the solution t, uh, to first order in t, and then you try to solve it to all order. And as mentioned, the approach, uh, how do you do that? By using the 10th order of lemma, and you can solve it uh, order by order. That is the classical approach. And then if you try to imitate this approach, differential form approach to our smoothing, meaning that you start with something which is highly singular, okay? So it turned out that the first step is already very non-trivial because uh, what is the first step? If this is the first step. The first step is that uh, you want to have the space that you try to solve the moral Cartan equation later. Okay. The classical case is just a product because the, you start with a smooth manifold, all the nearby manifold is all smooth, it's the same as X, so just X cross C. But now we start with something that is highly singular. So we have to first uh, construct this whole family. We don't need the other later part to be holomorphic. Let's just top, uh, find the topological manifold, smooth the topological structure type that information. The such that you only have, you only need to require the solution so to begin with at t equal to zero. And then you use this, and then the, then the next step is to try, try to solve the volcan time equation on this uh, new space. But the thing is, uh, what is this space to solve it? To solve this equation, because we need to use the 
uh, 10 total of lemma and all this structure. And then you need to really have not just the space, you need to really have a, uh, like a DVB, DGBV structure. What is that? We need to have all this uh, uh, D-bar, portal, uh, Lee bracket and BB operator, okay? But uh, except the first one, okay? Except we don't, we don't require to have the uh, holomorphic structure. We only require to have the holomorphic structure in the zero order at t could be zero. The reason is that we want to set it up to be a, like a topological problem to solve the coral Catan equation later. So therefore we all already need all the BV structure except the bar square equal to zero, or except at t equal to zero. Okay, so this is turned out to be a very non-trivial step. Okay. Once you have all this, you have really preparing all the structure, all this BDV, DGBV structure, then you can uh, uh, generalize this BTT uh, method to solve the more Cartan equation order by order. Once you, once you solve this order by order, then uh, you get a more Cartan equation that is a smooth, okay? That's it, okay? And that is the film, okay? So, so that is uh, uh, the sperm two. Okay. So okay. which says that, uh, yes. Sorry, can you hear me? We, uh, we, we can't see your slides sorry? anymore. We cannot see your cannot slide. See slide. Okay. Uh, uh, Still cannot see right at the moment. Almost okay. appearing. Now we can see your iPad and now we can see the slides. Okay. All right. All right. So after the short break. So uh, this is the, the second film. Okay. So this is the following that we can really do both of these steps. Okay. So the first step, which is rather complicated, is uh, we can. So again, remember what's the first, the, the, the two step. The two first step is that you set up the space to solve the more time equation. Well, the set up the space as a T equals zero, you already have the complex structure. Okay. And then you have to, and then you have to set it up so that they have all this the DGBV structure except the bar square equals zero. Okay. So you have to uh, construct all this structure here. Once you have that, then then you're ready. Then you can use our BTT methods to solve the Markov time equation. And then we can do both steps. And that is the same. Okay. Okay. And uh, this requires the following. And then uh, in a large complex structure limit, uh, then you can do this. This will give you the solution, smoothing of the large complex structure limit, okay. reproducing this result of our process, <clears throat> and so on. You can get the, once you have the solution, you get a semi infinite variation of structure near the large complex structure limit. So, okay. So this method uh, is more flexible. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, or one can use that to, to, to get smoothing for even other singular, singularity okay, beside beyond a large complex structure limit, which was not accessible before. So by the work of uh, Fenton, Philip, and Buddha. Okay. Uh, so the idea of doing this is the following. Okay. So, uh, Remember, so we will be constructing a space, but not the holomorphic structure. We only need the holomorphic structure to t bar square to the zero at t equal to zero. Okay, but but, but the, because start of a singular space, okay? so you start from a singular space. So for each of the, then you cover. So this is when t equal to zero. Okay, so start from this singular space, okay? and then you get a uh, local chart, and then uh, each of this local chart, you will want to find. Where is local chart to have a uh, unit deformation model? So each local chart, you get this deformation model. But you can't glue that holomorphically though. Okay? So it is constructed, we are gluing of some local model, but we have a non-holomorphic way. Yeah. So, so this is a picture here. Uh, let's say, for example, in the KV surface. So uh, in the case, this case of B is two dimensional, is this one. And then a singular point is 24 singular points. Okay. So that, so there are local models you can describe inside here. And also this, all this singularity 
It's really a singularity of the log structure, in fact. So this is uh, this space is not even log smooth. So you can describe some precise uh, local model in those cases. And all this are uh, as a canonical local model. Okay? But they can't do it holomorphically. So let me say, tell you a slightly a little bit more about this, this whole story. So this is a picture in two dimension. Okay. In a picture in three dimensional, okay, so this is a three dimensional base, it's up two dimensional. Okay. So instead of a edge with some points now become a face, okay. instead of the points now become some uh, uh, graph inside the spaces, for example. Okay. In general, the singularity set, sing, singularity set inside B here it's not really a uh, polyhedron like that. This is supposed to be amoeba. Okay. So the first thing we want to we'll do is uh, you put a put deformation to push all those uh, amoeba to be uh, like this, okay, to be some graph of the expanded dimension. We're not, so the pushing is not allowed, we are not requiring it to be like Lagrangian vibration anymore. So this is a very flexible way. But what is need is the following. One important thing is, uh, uh, for any coherent shift upstairs in X0, the large complex structure limit, the higher direct image shift are always zero. This is from, from some Stein property of the construction, the flexible construction that we use. Okay? That will play a very important role later. Okay? So, so therefore, on each, on each of these uh, local chart, okay, which is really, you take a local chart downstairs and then look at the pre-image, that will be start. Okay. And those will be, those will all have a local unit uh, smoothing model. Okay. So this is the local smoothing model for T, for zero. Okay. So, and then each of them, you will need all this, uh, most of this DGBV structure. And so what is that? Well, the DGBV is the form with value in the wedge of tangent bundle. Okay. So because all this has lost singular and all this, so therefore we look at, uh, this is the tangent shift, the exterior value of the tangent shift with the law structure, okay? And uh, we push it downstairs and then use the differential form uh, uh, on downstairs to get a resolution on this shift of the algebra, okay? And that, that is the one that we will be using. And, uh, and then, then we need to glue all this uh, uh, chart locally. Uh, when you grow this, you will see that there's just a uh, lot of things are not compatible. Uh, and then they're only compatible up to some water beam. So and then you have to correct things here and there to make sure that you can still grow all this structure, all this DGBV structure, except the D bar square equals zero equation. So, and then you can grow this. So this is like a topological model for X cross C for you to solve the work time equation later. Again, this is a particular, uh, resolutions of this shift that we use in this paper. But in fact, you can use uh, many other resolutions that we use a convoluted resolution earlier, the theorem of two, in fact. But this particular resolution will be important to relate it to the tropical geometry and the consistent uh, uh, scattering diagram later that will be our theorem three. Okay. So once you get this model, then you can start to solve the more time equation. And that step is uh, was because we already have everything prepared. Then you can just solve it order by order using the DB by thought. Okay. So again, we are really solving not just a, not just a one form. We are only solving it also with the functions f here. And it's really telling you that not just the holomorphic structure d bar square is zero. In fact, you also say that the f is telling you that what is the holomorphic volume form for this new complex structure. So both are d bar and the holomorphic volume form is solved at the same time, and that is just a a D bar BV equation that can be solved by BVP. Okay. Now the last, the, uh, the next film that we will show is that, in fact, so we solve these equations. Okay. So this is the solutions. Okay. We solve the uh, market time equations. Okay. That give you the, uh, that give you the complex structure of the smoothing and all this. But in fact, we can study the asymptotic behavior of that. Okay. So the asymptotic behavior of that well, like before, the asymptotic behavior of more time equation for this local problem gives you consistent uh, scattering diagram locally, but this one gives you global. Okay, you give you the whole global. Five minutes over time. Ah, uh, sorry. You are five minutes over time. Yeah, I only have. Oh, okay. So uh, let me show you the the last slide here. 
Okay. So let me explain the, the statement here for you. So what first of all, the last complex structure limit, if you're doing a toric degeneration, it's just union of a very toric variety. Okay, and they take away singular part. And then the semi-flat picture is not like cotangent bundle uh, over the lattice part. And how are these two related? Okay. Now, so the theorem two is telling you that okay, you can set it up so that you can solve the moral Catan equation globally. And just saying all this uh, uh, resolution and so on, BTT and so on, you can just solve it. Okay. And uh, if you take away all the single stratum and co-dimensional strata, over there, then you can you can you get the semi-flat model. Okay. On the semi-flat model, you can have the wall and all this initial initial wall. Okay. And uh, and if you the, the the next thing is the following. Okay. So you will try to re compare this uh, toric degeneration picture and the semi-flat picture here. Okay. And if you use this picture, the, this global solution, if you restrict to this, the theorem three is really telling you that. This is really the semi-flat picture with the solutions together with the scattered box, scattering, uh, scattered, uh, uh, scattered uh, solutions. This is the wall. And then those are giving you consistent scattering diagram. So this are uh, originally, if you want this is only local, but now this telling you that all this local picture consistently pull together to get a global picture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have time possibly for one quick question. Okay, there is one. Uh, but yes. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, it's coming. Yeah. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask if I understand correctly. So you're relating solutions to Mori Cartan equations to walls and consistent scattering theorems in the classical sense of conserved soil mangrove sea. But I was wondering because recently there has been defined uh, quantum versions of scattering theorems where the attached functions live in a quantized Lie algebra. And in this case, is there the analog of Mori Cartan, something like quantum Mori Cartan, or what would be the analog if you don't work with um, usual consistent scattering diagrams, but quantum scattering diagrams if you change the, the algebra? Is there uh, we, we also, in the early paper, the local one, I mean, at this moment, we are mostly talking about the global one. Uh, this the, the film one is the local picture. We also have a similar result for the refined uh, scattering diagram and, 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 uh, and the more Cartan equation for that. Yeah. Yes, uh, but, okay. But the Thank quantum you. one, it's a good question. I, I, I don't, couldn't tell you the, I don't know the answer yet, yeah, but yeah. But maybe I would look at it and see what I can do it. I don't know, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, then, uh, Thank you again uh, for the talk. Thank you for the question.